Built in Birmingham in 1917, heavy tank Mark IV, number 2324, never saw action in France during the terrible battles on the Western Front. Instead, he, and I say he, as male tanks were armed with naval guns and machine guns, whereas female tanks only mounted machine guns, was used as a tank corps training vehicle until 1919. 2324 was presented in 1919 to HMS Excellent, the Royal Navy's gunnery establishment on Whale Island, Portsmouth, as a thank you for the Navy's help in solving a tank gunnery problem during World War I. The tank was immobilised and placed on static display at the base. But by 1940, Britain was once more under attack. Portsmouth, as a major naval base, was attacked furiously by the Luftwaffe on many occasions. There was also a dire shortage of armoured vehicles, and after the Dunkirk evacuation, the Germans seemed poised to invade southern England. Anything that could fight was located and pressed into service. Then, a young army officer spotted Excellent sitting silently on his plinth. The army officer approached the naval commander of HMS Excellent with a novel suggestion. Given some time and a few sailors, the old tank could perhaps be returned to running order. It seemed a tall order. After all, number 2324 had been sitting outside in the sea air for 21 years. The tank's engine was stripped down, repaired using parts cannibalised off another memorial tank. In a tense moment, Excellent's engine coughed and spluttered. The old tank was alive, rearmed with two six-pounder guns and a brace of Lewis machine guns mounted on the roof. Excellent was returned to service. The 28-ton tank was repainted in a camouflage scheme. Each day, Excellent, manned by a crew of Royal Navy sailors, would drive off Whale Island up to South Sea Common near Portsmouth and then back again. The sight of this old ironclad belching smoke as he crawled along at just over three miles an hour was a familiar sight, but by 1942 the emergency had passed, and prone to breakdowns, Excellent was quietly retired back to his display plinth. And that was definitely the end of the story. Well, not quite. Fast forward 27 years to 1969. The tank began to be renovated by the Navy, but the job was slow and by 1971 still hadn't been completed. Excellent was passed over to the Army for restoration, and the venerable machine went to the Royal Electrical and Mechanical Engineers workshops at Bovington Camp. Then, in 1974, Excellent once more coughed and sputtered to life and drove under his own power for the first time in 32 years. If you want to see Excellent today, he lives at the Tank Museum at Bovington, in Dorset. He's 101 years old, and incredibly, is maintained in full running order. I hope very much that you've enjoyed this video. If you have, please do subscribe and also share. Many thanks.